Congressman Colin Allred is a Democrat of Texas who serves in the weaponization of, weaponization of federal government subcommittee, and he joins me now. Um, for people who didn't see the hearing today, what would be your summary of what happened there? Yeah. Well, the premise of the committee uh, is flawed. Uh, the idea uh, is not true. And, of course, the premise of the Twitter files is rotten at its core, uh, which is the idea that there's some kind of vast conspiracy uh, between the federal government, again, the federal government under Donald Trump, uh, and uh, Twitter and, and its previous you know, owners uh, to try and suppress conservative speech. You and I both know that's not happening, but this is what can happen uh, when you get stuck in an information uh, loop in which you're not allowing outside information in, in which you try and just pursue uh, you know, your own ideas. That's what I think we're seeing on this committee. Uh, it's, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Uh, it's not realistic. And when it's brought into the light of day, it just sounds like kind of a damp squib. Well, here's, here's the thing. That, uh, so uh, Oversight Committee had their run at this um, uh, under yeah. James Comer's chairmanship, which, you know, let's put that aside. The thing that I was surprised today, so let's, let's concede, and I don't even necessarily think this is the case, but I'm just going to, for the moment, right, for, for the argument, that there were things that Twitter did in terms of the way they moderated content that were, in retrospect, mistakes, or they were biased, or whatever they were. I still don't understand where the federal, like, what's the federal government angle here? Like, whatever your beef is with Twitter, this whole idea was going to be about the deep state and about, did, did that come out today? Is there things that yeah. troubled you, maybe, revelations today that, that, that are legit? Listen, I would be concerned if the government was getting involved in censoring speech. What yes. they're really pointing to uh, is the FBI pointing out that certain actions are probably Russian disinformation ops, uh, that certain actions uh, may be them trying to influence our elections, that you have to keep an eye on this because you didn't uh, in the 2016 election, and we saw with disastrous results uh, how that can play out uh, when the, that, those efforts are allowed to go unchecked on our social media platforms. And that's what I was saying at the end of my statement today, which is that instead of, you know, if you take the tinfoil hat off, uh, that there's a vast conspiracy. And you maybe think that there are just normal folks who are running a social media platform who are trying to do their best on content moderation, and that you have some national security agencies that are also trying to do their best to protect our democracy, that maybe that makes more sense than this idea of there being some vast, overarching conspiracy that we all know we could not pull off if our government tried to do something like that. Well, and this is the other thing to me, like the, the question here. So let's say, again, there, there's interactions between uh, folks in the national security apparatus of the U.S. government and Twitter folks around these questions, right? Disinformation or foreign disinformation. Obviously, there's a precedent here. Uh, there was a yeah. you know, criminal sabotage by the Russian government in 2016. Um, What's the top, like, what's the actual tangible policy implication here? This is the other thing. Like, if you're moving from, if you're saying this was bad, right, or there's a grievance, yeah. then we should repair it. And so then the question becomes, the, the, so what? 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 <laughs> and I, I, I'm yeah. not, what, what is the answer to that? I guess it's that we should allow uh, foreign actors to, you know, use our social media platforms to try and influence our elections, that we should allow them to drive, you know, COVID misinformation, or allow them to drive uh, whatever wedges they can in our society, they're actively doing it. We know this. We have indictments, uh, you know, of the Russian agencies that are involved in this. We can even identify who the hacking groups were that were involved in, in some of these efforts, and they're still doing it. These are ongoing ops, and it's not just the Russians. It's also the Chinese. We have other adversaries, the Iranians, who want to take advantage of our own open flat platforms, of our own open society, and pit us against each other and have us having these arguments instead of having arguments about how we're going to help our people or advance our own national security. And so I guess that's what uh, this, you know, Jim Jordan and, his co and my colleagues would like to see, is that uh, we allow this to happen because it was helping them. And ultimately, Chris, I think that's what it comes back to in many ways, as what you said earlier, is that many of these efforts have been to support Donald Trump in his candidacy, to support, in some cases, some of them. Uh, to support my opponent when I ran for Congress in 2018, who was backed through a super PAC by Russian money that we later found out about and that was led to two indictments in the Southern District of New York. What if the, the argument of someone who's not trying to grind an axe here, right, but is that 
that's just the cost of the First Amendment, right? I mean, we have we do have an open marketplace, and there's going to be foreign actors who insert themselves into that 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 marketplace of ideas, and um, even if they don't have the constitutional protection of the First Amendment, that's basically sort of the the kind of cost of of, of what all this comes with, and and the security folks should take a lighter touch. Listen, there's always going to be a balance, and, and I think we have to also uh, recognize that we don't want to see the FBI, depending on, especially on, depending on who's leading it, uh, coming in with a heavy hand yeah. uh, into social media platforms or any security agency. And so there always has to be a balance. But when we know, particularly around elections, Chris, and this is something that there's a, a well-written playbook on this, when we know that there are certain windows of time in which that they'll try and drop information to try and influence our elections, there's certain windows of time in which we know they're going to try and push information operations, that those times are heightened periods where we should consider, and any responsible social media platform should consider, how you can not allow your platform that allows folks to share what they had for lunch that day mm -hmm. uh, to become uh, a weapon of, the, of the, you know, the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians trying to influence our democracy. Final question here. There's no um, evidence, as far as I've reviewed and I've looked through it, of there's uh, there's no point in which like the FBI is like showing up with like orders, right, to like right. shut yeah. something off or like someone from DHS, right? These are these are requests. Yeah. Well, if you go back to you know some of the uh, communications they're referencing, it's this was flagged by DHS, <laughs> right. or this was suggested or mentioned uh, by the FBI. Uh, and I think what Twitter then did, from what we've seen, is they engaged in the hard back and forth questions of what should we do, how far should we go. And you can disagree on where they landed, uh, but that certainly wasn't the FBI's decision or DHS's decision where they landed. That was their decision. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that content moderation is extremely difficult, and we don't yet have it figured yeah. out. Uh, and there are you know, types of speech that I'll get on my mentions today and probably tonight that I would object to. But that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be allowed. But there are some things that we have to be more careful about, especially if it leads to violence or undermines our democracy.